All right, guys. It is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas on this feels like maybe 82, 83 degree Monday now afternoon, March 5th, 20. 18 where I have now spent five hours into putting together this week's massive three-part uh, economic meltdown roundup rant uh, which will be viewed by fewer people than any other rant I do all week and I am now in part three of this uh, week's Roundup looking at how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, pulling out all the stops to take out a planet. So I'm going to continue talking to myself with just kind of a flotsam and jetsam roundup going around the planet of, of evidence of how the global industrial economy is taking us down. Uh, and we're going to start obviously over there in China. What is going on over there in China this week? <clears throat> and anyone who does not understand why this article is included in an economic meltdown roundup rant, clearly I've had a failure to communicate. <clears throat> China says its moderate defense spending rises are no threat. Yes. China's moderate defense spending rises in the past few years have been to make up for, for past deficiencies in defense spending, and the country's military will not threaten anyone. A senior diplomat said on Sunday ahead of the release of China's new defense budget. Yes, uh, how much China spends on its armed forces is closely watched around the region and in Washington for pointers about the country's broader strategic intentions amid an impressive modernization program that has included developing stealth fighters, aircraft carriers, and anti-satellite missiles. There you go. Last year's military spending was budgeted to increase 7% to 1 trillion yuan, otherwise known as $164 billion, which, when you uh, set it up against the U.S., is about one quarter, one quarter of the proposed U.S. U.S defense spending for this year. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, which, which, of course, is the bigger story. Uh, anybody in the U.S. Uh, talking shit about any other country on this planet for spending, uh, for spending too much money uh, on their defense departments. Uh, I don't know how many countries, you know, number two, three, four, five, whatever, uh, after, the, you know, after the United States, how many of the budgets of the, uh, of the other top countries you would have to combine to uh, equal the U.S. defense spending. Okay, and that story next to this story from Reuters News, China keeps its growth target of around 6.5% this year. China aims to expand its economy by around 6.5% this year, the same as in 2017. Uh, the goal was kept unchanged even though the Chinese economy grew 6.9% last year 
exceeding the government's own target. There you go. Uh, growing trade frictions with the United States have all have jumped to the top of the list of risks facing China this year. My part one of this rant was all about the trade war exploding between the U.S. and China. But this next story, guys, is pretty much the poster child for this. what this whole economic roundup rant is about. Uh, th this is this what's going to be a two-hour rant summed up in one story. This is really the only story you need to read to understand how the global industrial economy uh, with the U.S., China, and I would say India uh, at the wheels is, is bringing down, the, is literally, literally eating the planet. In this case, as we take a look at Caterpillar Incorporated in the news. Caterpillar drives sales on China's new Silk Road uh, at a Caterpillar facility in eastern China. An array of excavators, earth movers, and road-making machinery is displayed on slopes and in mud pits. Uh, good God, the audience is Caterpillar's local network of dealers, uh, you know, Chinese dealers. Um, much of the heavy equipment at the Caterpillar ex exhibition in China this week could find its way to construction and mining projects in places like Pakistan or Kazakhstan or as far away as Africa. No shit, Sherlock. Caterpillar has been incorporated, has been literally Planet Eater Incorporated. Caterpillar has been investing heavily in China. No shit, Sherlock. The Nantong facility is one of 25 similar ones that is set up across the country in the hopes of cracking the largest construction and mining equipment market in the world no shit, and helping fuel the growth of that market, Caterpillar executives and analysts say is China's Belt and Road Initiative, a huge infrastructure spending spree that builds on the old Silk Road trading routes, the ambitious and ever-growing $1 trillion initiative now includes projects spanning Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, analysts say Caterpillar's Asia-Pacific sales figures reflect growing demand for machines destined for Belt and Road projects as contractors buy most of their equipment in China to take advantage of tax rebates handed out for the initiative. Uh, there you go. Uh, Asia-Pacific sales increased 22%. And you wonder why uh, the number one ham bone stock tip for the end times has always been Caterpillar Incorporated. Asia Caterpillar's Asia-Pacific sales increased 22% in the last quarter of 2017 over 2016 with construction demand inside China accounting for about half of that increase. Uh, Caterpillar expects demand to remain strong. No shit. Uh, 
So once purchased in China to take advantage of all of these uh, rebates, the heavy equipment is then shipped off to projects across the vast geography of the initiative and put to work building power plants in Pakistan, constructing highways in Belarus, or developing new mines in Africa. Most of the equipment sent abroad is made in China. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, there you go. Uh, this goes on and on, but anybody who does not understand all of this these dots connected between uh, uh, all of these infrastructure initiatives being cheerleaded uh, by everyone uh, from Donald Trump to this little planet eater over there in uh, China to the planet eater over there in India to the planet eater down there in Brazil connecting all of these mega infrastructure plans uh, with the, the direct connection between that and the takedown of planet Earth, uh, obviously you, you are not spending five minutes a day uh, on the fucking mainstream media. I absolutely got a sick, twisted, ironic, eco-Nazi laugh out of this headline from Reuters News today. China to cut more coal and steel output to defend its blue skies. There you go. Uh, China's state planner pledged on Monday this morning to cut more steel and coal production capacity this year putting the country on track to beat its long-term targets as Beijing reinforced its vow to beat smog and make, quote, skies blue again. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Oh, God. Anyway, guys, uh... You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and act like China's pledge to, uh, to tackle its pollution is 100% uh, unadulterated horseshit. Uh, you know, it's a goddamn mess over there, and obviously they're going to start doing something. They're going to do the absolute bare minimum uh, that they can do uh, to greenwash uh, the clueless fucking morons over there who want an American way of life, you know, without a 21st century American way of life, without living, uh, you know, under the environmental conditions of a 19th century London slum dweller. So they are going to take some measures, but uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be the absolute bare minimum to keep the greenies off their back, to have the least effect on their corporate bottom lines, and it, it, and it is in no way, shape, or form going to, uh, to suggest on any level that uh, China's rising middle class is going to abandon its uh, planet-eating hopes and dreams for every one of their 1.3 billion residents to live like Americans. And probably the way, the, 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 the one area they probably are going to be somewhat effective is, is cutting uh, down on the air pollution, on the smog, uh, the particulate matter. And of course, then we have the little problem 
that it is the the smog from China that is cooling the planet. It is dimming the sun sunlight, and so as they do or have a little bit of success in curing their air pollution problem, all they are going to do is exacerbate the global warming problem by erasing the one positive benefit of all of this air pollution, which is, which is geoengineering this planet. We are fucked. Whatever China does, it makes no fucking difference at this point. We're fucked if China does, we're fucked if China doesn't. Oh, God. Anyway, enough of China. Let's go over there to India. Uh, and, and you think that this would be good news. India's tax hike to slash palm oil imports and to boost soil oil and sunflower oil. A, a, a hike in India's import tax on palm oil could dent purchases by the world's biggest edible oil importer while making imports of soy oil and sunflower oil lucrative for the country's refiners industry group said um, lower imports by such a major buyer of of palm oil could also weigh on prices for producers of palm oil used in everything from soap to foodstuffs. Um, so what does this really mean? Uh, so thanks to this new tariff, we do have the prediction that palm oil imports could drop by 500,000 tons to India, but what that means is a drop uh, from 9.3 million tons of palm oil in the past year to 8.8 .8 million tons of palm oil this year. There you go. Uh, and then of course uh, most, of, most of that 500,000 tons of oil is going to be made up from soybean oil from, and take a wild guess where the soybean oil is coming from. Uh, to replace palm oil, it is coming from the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. So instead uh, of chopping down rainforests for palm oil, uh, they're just going to move to chopping down rainforests for soy oil. Now this whole thing about sunflower oil, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm quite sure uh, that, if, that if you dug very deeply into the sunflower oil industry, you would find some massive insult to the planet. But anyway, uh, oh yeah, moving along from that horseshit, this story here, guys, in full disclosure, I just finished a, a, a breakfast of uh, a factory farmed ham and, and my choice tonight for dinner is between factory farmed uh, Ital pork Italian sausage spaghetti or factory farmed pork egg rolls. Uh, with that disclosure I will read this disgusting story from Associated Press. Hogs versus humans. Neighbors fight back against swine waste. Another way of saying, of saying swine waste is literal hog shit. 
literally pig shit raining down on uh, people living next to these uh, giant factory pig farms because the, there was this big story in Rolling Stone magazine a, a few years ago about uh, all of the pig shit being dumped into, uh, into rivers being a major source of pollution. So what the pig farmers have started doing is, is what the factory chicken farmers have been doing for years. And that is literally getting this liquefied pig shit and, and mixing it in water, putting it on, on sprayer trucks, and hosing down farm fields with literal pig shit. They've been doing the same thing with uh, chicken shit for years. They're one of the characters in my never-to-be-published uh, novel that I wrote uh, 20, that's been sitting on a shelf for 25 years. He is one, one of these people who runs a manure truck who does this with, uh, with chicken shit. So now they've added pig shit to chicken shit. And, and, and I've been, and, and I know what they're talking about in, in a real life example. Uh, from the, this land I used to own up in North Georgia. They get out there, it, it, so to keep from dumping the shit in the river, they, they literally spray it all over farm fields. And, 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 the, and, and, and there's this article talks about literally pig shit raining out of the sky. Uh, raining out of the sky, uh, and there you go, uh, hogs versus humans, take a wild guess who's going to win this as lobbying reports show the National Pork Producers Council has been meeting with EPA officials in Congress recently to discuss federal regulations for reporting emissions from livestock farms. Uh, yes, the industry has backed a House bill co-sponsored by two North Carolina Republicans that seeks to limit the ability of neighbors to sue hog farmers. Do you think so? Uh, there you go. And then of course, take a wild guess, uh, the number one uh, player in, uh, in this story is Virginia-based Smithfield Incorporated, which was purchased in 2013 by a Chinese corporation. The company, the Chinese company now owning Smithfield, has called the lawsuits by the neighbors a quote, cash grab. There you go. Uh, quoting the Smithfield China, Chinese spokesperson, quote, talking about these bullshit regulations now, quote, it protects the environment and the neighbors of farms. Oh, shit. oh I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, more than 80% of hog farms are family farms. These farmers care deeply about their communities. They wouldn't do anything to hurt the places where they and their families live. Okay, from hog shit to bullshit, this Bitcoin bullshit, from The Guardian, just the latest uh, this, this, I just mention this story pretty much every week 
This is just the latest. Bitcoin's energy usage is huge. We cannot afford to ignore it. The cryptocurrency, you know, mining the cryptocurrency uses as much CO2 every year as one million transatlantic flights from London to New York. We need to take this seriously as a climate threat. Bitcoin's electricity usage is enormous. In November, the power consumed by the Bitcoin network was estimated to be higher than that of the Republic of Ireland. And since then, its demands have only grown. It's now on pace to use just over 42, I guess this is terawatts of electricity this year, placing Bitcoin ahead of New Zealand and Hungary and just behind Peru. That's commensurate with CO2 emissions of 20 megatons or roughly 1 million transatlantic flights. Uh, that fact should be a grave notion to anyone who hopes for the cryptocurrency to grow further in statue, stature and enter widespread usage. But even more alarming is that this, as that things could get much, much worse helping to increase climate change in the process. Oh shit, Sherlock. In simplified terms, Bitcoin mining is competition to waste the most electricity possible by doing pointless arithmetic quintillions of times per second. Oh shit, Sherlock. Okay. Uh, what are the cops up to? this week in France. I think last year it was rubber bullets, I mean last week it was rubber bullets and water cannons and this year police tear gas anti-nuclear protesters in France. No shit, Sherlock. Police use tear gas during clashes with anti-nuclear protesters, protesters at a waste site in northeastern France on uh, Saturday. Uh, the protesters are at a radio act. Uh, the, the site was selected by France. The site where they were protesting was selected by France's radioactive waste agency for exploratory drilling ahead of an application to, to, to create a nuclear waste storage site there. Uh, police evacuated the forest during a major operation on February 2nd and then Saturday's rally began calmly with a march of about 300 people, but it wasn't long before cops in riot gear were on the scene with tear gas. Okay, from France to Honduras, the latest update in this story, Honduras energy executive arrested over environmental activist murder. No shit, Sherlock. Honduran authorities said they have arrested an energy company executive allegedly behind the, the high-profile 2016 murder of prominent environmental activist Bertha Caceres. Uh, this is electrical engineer Roberto David Castillo Mejia as the intellectual perpetrator behind Caceres' murder. 
Castillo had served as CEO of the company which Caceres actively campaigned against over plans to build a hydroelectric dam at the time of the activist slaying. Uh, she opposed uh, the company's plans to construct the dam across a river upon which indigenous communities depended. There you go. So he didn't actually pull the trigger, of course. He just paid two masked gunmen to fatally shoot the activist at her home in La Esperanza, otherwise known as the Hope, Hope Honduras. Okay, as long as we're in Latin America, let's go down on a little, uh, few miles south. Migrate or die. Venezuelans flood into Colombia despite crackdown. Um, good Lord, uh, anybody who does not know what economic collapse and failed states look like, uh, just go down to Venezuela. Uh, where more and more uh, people are fleeing Venezuela and the Venezuela-Colombian border marks a front line in Latin America's worst humanitarian crisis. The Venezuelans arrive hungry, thirsty, and tired um, but relieved to have escaped the calamitous situation in their homeland. They are among more than half a million Venezuelans who have fled to Colombia hoping to escape grinding poverty, rising violence, and shortages of food and medicine in their once prosperous oil exporting nations quoting one of the new arrivals it's migrate and give it a try here or die of hunger there those are the only two options there meaning in venezuela people eat from the trash here people are happy just to eat there you go. That's what's going on on the Venezuela-Colombia border. But let's go from that humanitarian crisis to the humanitarian crisis building in Disneyland. Some Disneyland staff say they struggle with homelessness and food insecurity. No shit. More than half of workers surveyed at Disneyland in California were concerned about being evicted from their homes. For many Disneyland employees, a hard day's work does not pay them enough to keep a roof over their heads or to put food on their tables, according to the results of a new survey. Nearly three-quarters of full and part-time employees reported that they did not make enough money from their job at Disneyland Resort to pay for basic expenses uh, each month. There you go. Uh, anybody who does not understand what the collapse of the global industrial economy uh, is going to look like, I suggest a trip to Disneyland uh, in, uh, in California and maybe you can ask Mickey Mouse what uh, food insecurity and the ever-present threat of homelessness looks like. But we are going to wrap up today's m marathon three-part economic meltdown roundup rant 
with this hilarious story from the techno utopians Porsche starts work on flying passenger drones you might have to cross another item off the list of things you never thought Porsche would do this uh, auto magazine over in Germany has claimed that Porsche is now developing passenger drones. While there's clearly not much to show at this point, you would have some control over the machine but would not need a pilot's license to fly one. As like others, other in-progress drones, a large chunk of the flight control would be automated. So the Jetsons, finally, remember the Jetsons, you know, flying around in their little, uh, in their little jet packs. Finally, we have arrived at the age of the Jetsons here. Uh, Anyway, guys, we are so fucked. So, uh, but I need to wrap up part three of this marathon uh, Monday economic meltdown roundup rant because I have been at this for five hours. And so now I am 30 minutes away from interviewing uh, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Michael T. Clare. And we're going to touch on a lot of the issues I have been talking about all morning on this beautiful day here in the end times. And so you can look forward to that interview tomorrow evening in the latest edition of my Voices from the Doomosphere program. But for this rant, smoke them if you guide them. Adam, we are so fucked. Bye, guys. This little log you can... Oops, you're on your leash. Don't run too hard. Bye, guys. I have to go eat some factory-farmed pork. <laughs>